Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we will create user-defined functions to build a calculator in Python. So let's get right into it. Before we dive in and begin creating our user-defined functions to make our own calculator, I would like to take a minute to talk about our built-in eval function that is available in Python. Eval function takes one argument and that would be a string argument. A string can be any expression for evaluation. We could say two plus five, we need to print this out. So a print statement, and when we test this code, it will give us seven. That's the addition of two plus five. As you can see, this eval function evaluates the user input directly and, you, and use it as a calculator in a single line of code. First, we would use input function. So here we can say input, and write an expression so that input function will ask the user to provide the expression that we need to evaluate using the eval function. The input function will return the user input as a string by default. So the eval function will take that string that is returned from the input and evaluates the resulting value of the expression. The print statement then will display the result to the user. So let's let's give it a quick test and here it is prompting us to enter expression for evaluation. Again, we can do any expression. It's not limited to two or three different parameters. So let's say six plus five minus five minus six, and we would get zero. This is probably the easiest way we can build a calculator in Python in a single line without any additional code because the eval function is a built-in function. But in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create our own calculator. We are going to start with sequential code and then update our code using functional approach. So let's get started with our sequential program. We will start with getting three inputs from the user. So the first input will be variable A. So we will uh, ask for the user input. And here we will say enter first number. And the next input will be the operation that needs to be done. Let's just say underscore or equals another input. And here I'll say enter operation, whether it's a plus minus product division or a power operation. And the third input would be another variable similar to A. So that would be another number. So the idea is we'll get A and do the operation between A and B. So here we will say B and enter second number. So with these lines of code, we will get three different inputs for variable A first, and then the operation that the user selects, and then variable B. So if the user is selecting plus in the second input, then we would find the sum of A and B. That's the idea. That means now we have to check what the underscore value is. If that is equal to plus, then we will simply print A plus B. That's pretty simple and intuitive. Now we're gonna make a copy of this and then uh, paste that five times. So for every new operation, we will say plus product division. And for the power, I know it's um, double asterisk, but for the display to the user or what the user enters, um, we will just use this sign. And here we will do the product, uh, the power operation. So this would be minus uh, product division. Let's give it a try. Uh, enter first number, we will say two, enter. Now we're gonna choose the operation. So let's just say plus, make, it, make our life easier. Enter second number, let's say nine, and we should get 11, and that's all. Let's give it a few more runs. And here we're gonna say five, enter. Now we're gonna choose division, and second number would also be five and we get 1.0. So I think the code is working fine. Next step would be to use this code and convert it into a functional language so that we are going to be using this code and build our own user-defined functions and make our calculator. Now, the nice thing about functions is that we can break this down into different functions doing individual things. So let's say all these user inputs, we want to put them together as a separate function. And we can do that by defining a new function here. And my function name would just be get user inputs. I'll 
attach all those segments as my individual segments within the gate user inputs function. And at the end of the function, I will simply return the list. And uh, I would write that as a comma underscore comma b. Again, the underscore here is nothing but just an user input on what operation to perform. So that is all that function definition needs. Now I'm going to create a, a bunch of functions here, each one for addition, subtraction, product division, and power operations that we did here. So we're going to take that statement and define add a comma b, and in the definition we will return a plus b. And that would be our add function. So what this does is it takes two parameters, A and B value. It will simply return the addition of those. We'll simply copy this five times. And here, instead of add, it would be a minus function. And it will return A minus B. This would be a product. And it would return A times B. This would be a division. And similarly, it would return A divided by B. Now, this would be a power function and it would simply return a to the power b. Now remember, this, is, this function is only asking for user inputs. It gets three inputs and, and returns those as a list. All these are my operations, but I haven't done any calculations yet. So I need a calculator function. So we will define calculate, and this function will take a list as an input, and that list will basically come from here. Calculate x, we're passing one argument, but that one argument is a list, so it has three different values. These are the values. Now what needs to be done is we're checking the central value, the index one value, and if, based on what value is passed for this argument, we will we will invoke all these different functions. So we have to check what that value is. And that's given by index value one of x list. If that is equal to plus, well then we will perform addition function. And in addition function, we need two arguments, a and b. So these are the a and b's. The first value, list x, zero, comma, x2. So this will invoke and it will return a value. So we will have to assign that to something. So we will say result equals to add. So basically what this calculate now does is if the operation was plus, it will invoke addition function and return the result. Now we'll copy this function four more times. And each time we will do different operations, product, division, and power. And this would invoke power. This would invoke minus product, division. So if plus, we will invoke add. If minus, we'll invoke minus product, division, Power. That is fine. Now we need to return the result. So we'll simply say return result. That should be all for that function definition. Now let's take a step back and look what we have done or achieved so far. We, we have a function that takes inputs. Then we have a function that does all the operations. Then we have a calculate function that reads what the operation is, calculates, and then returns the result. Now, I think that's all the functions we need. We need to invoke all these functions, though. We haven't invoked yet. We invoked add, minus, product, division, and power inside our calculate, but we never actually ran our calculator. So by running this calculate function, we are running our calculator. And remember, this calculator will return the result. So we need a print statement to, to print that result. So we're going to start with a print statement. And inside that print statement, we're going to invoke the calculate function. Calculate will take an uh, input of a list. So that input of a list will be a return from this function, get user input. And if you look at the definition of get user input, there is no parameters needed because it doesn't take any. All it does is ask for user inputs and returns a list. So this basically returns a list, which is the input to the calculate function as, as described here. And then calculate will return the result after the calculation is done, which is printed by the print statement. Let's get rid of these extra lines. Let's give it a try. Enter first number two, enter operation plus, enter second number, let's just say eight and get a 10. Run it again. Enter first number, let's say 15. Enter operation division. Second number is 5. We get 3.0. Let's try a power function, 2. And operation is the power operation. Second number is, let's say, 5. 2 to the power 5. And it gave us an error, so let's fix that. So I think the issue is this. We need to have this sign here. Run it again. And... 2 to the power 5, and that will give us 32. Let's run it again one more time. 3 
to the power 2 and that gives us 9. So that is working fine and that's our calculator using our user defined functions. The results show that our calculator is working fine when provided with correct user input and operation. But can you think of improvements we can make to this calculator? Of course, we can improve this code, and there are at least a few glaring pitfalls that we can improve upon. First, our calculator currently is only limited to five operations, each involving two variables, A and B. We can easily improve this by adding new functions to be able to handle additional mathematic expressions, such as modulo operations. Second, our calculator cannot handle situations where input are in undesirable or incorrect formats. For example, if a user inputs non-numerical value here, it will give us an error right away. Therefore, the code will fail. We could use input validation to improve that aspect. Also, our calculator currently does not support mathematical expressions involving single variable. For example, a square root operation. These are all good improvements that we can add to the code. Do you think you can make any of these improvements? I recommend that you practice coding and improve the calculator as well as your skills. I would love to hear from you what other improvements you can think of. So please send me your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know if you need help on any particular ones. If you like the tutorial, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, thank you.